All in the name of science, Emory University is going to restrict Wi-Fi access to people who aren't boosted. Not even just jab, but boosted. My wife was telling me about this this sport. I said, be kidding me. Because all the name of science, man. I mean, so let's check this out. This is from uh, Fox 13 in uh, Memphis, and there's tons of articles on this. Uh, Emory University has launched a program to limit internet access by students who refuse to get a booster shot. <laughs> Uh, the program is designed to encourage students to get a COVID, not the, the initial jab, not just the Johnson, 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 which was one and done, but the booster too. The school's policy requires students and faculty to have COVID vaccination and booster shots. How many there, Emory? Students have not gotten three vaccinations were notified in February that their internet access would be limited or the speed slowed if they did not either show they had the boost or requested an exemption from getting the shot, which will be rubber stamped denied. About 1,300 students had their Wi-Fi restricted in the week of March 14th. Why the hell are you going here, my friends? Why would you ever go to Emory University? The executive director of uh, the, this clown, Amir St. Clair, told the Emory Wheel that the half the students who had not got the booster then got it or requested an exemption after the program began. Uh, the Wi-Fi restrictions were a valuable compliance measure to help promote participation. Yeah, the little Hitler is there. Uh, um, St. Clair told the website that if a student submit proof of booster vax, their internet access would be restored within a few days. All right. Why? In, oh, let's look at who uh, Amir St. Clair is, shall we? And I'm not going to show you guys because I don't want to get the uh, uh, trade, whatever the hell it's called. I forgot. I, I, I did a video one time with some clown out in the Virginia. And she uh, submitted a trademark request or whatever it is. And, you, and I, had, I said, well, just because I showed her website. And uh, she said, you can't do that. I, I might just revisit her again, actually, because uh, she really ticked me off. All right, so let's check out who Amir is. Let's go to start page. We're going to type in Amir St. Clair. Uh, I don't know who this person is. Let's take a gander, shall we? Um, and let's see. Associate Vice President Emery. Um, men's sock? No, oh, wait, that might not be the same person. Let's take a look. I'm going to pause it. He was the men's soccer coach at Aurora University Athletics. How ironic is that? And then he got promoted to uh, the vice president of the COVID-19 response. So a make work job because uh, Emory's got more money than God, essentially. We need to tax the foundations. We're going to look at the M the uh, the endowment they have. Hold on a sec. He was on the board of directors of this campfire.org. Uh, they advanced DEI. They engage in actively anti-racist practice. Address and end cultural appropriation, promote, I mean, it's just a typical, this, the perfect, this guy fits perfectly at Emory University. Let's take a look at the Emory University endowment. The Emory University's endowment uh, returned 46.8% over the one-year period that ended in June 30th, 2021. It now is worth $11 billion. These funds allow Emory to recruit, retain, and support the best students, faculty, and staff like Ola Mir there. Uh, and continue the long-term sustainability of the university's teaching. Uh, all right, so we just, we got to start taxing people, man. Um, Republicans, get your head out of your butts and recognize the best methodology to change behavior is to engage in the tax state. How do, oh, I just, I cannot believe how many Republicans are just like, don't tax me. I'm like, they're not taxing you. They're going to tax the people to make them capitulate to the way you want to govern the country. And the way we want to govern the country is at odds with the way it's being governed now. So use the ability to tax these people to get them to heal so they stop this insanity. First, don't send your kids to Emory. I mean, it's, it's, look, it's just a rich kid school, man. We all know this. All these rich kids who have never dug a ditch in their life, never have. They're all, they go to Emory. They're just spoiled brats. No other way around. And if you're an Emory grad, I'm sorry, but you know what I'm talking about, 100%. Um, and I know I knew a couple guys from Emory, nicest guys. I'll never forget. I used to work in the bar, and when I was a bartender, this guy, nice guy, big libertarian guy. Uh, just I love this guy. Played guitar. He looked like a hippie. Had a long hair. Great, great guy. But he was an Emory guy, and I, you know, he just came for money. But he's a good man. However, that doesn't mean we we don't stand up to to this. The, it's not him. It's the group as a whole that's pushing this insanity. Why you send your kids there? Well, because they're all spoiled parents who said, "Oh my goodness." They're, they're watermelons. They're green on the out, but they're red on the end, man. They're red, deep, deep red on the end. 
on the inside. Commies, they want to dictate how you live your life. And if you think it stops at Emory, where the hell have you been, man? I don't understand. Anyway, go after the endowments. Now, look, everyone's like, how dare you promote a cap uh, unrealized capital gain tax? Look, I would say I 100%. I'd much rather do a wealth tax, 100%. Start using the tax code to get the policies enacted that will get these corporations and universities to heal. That's what you do. That's what the libs have done for years. Why can't the right figure this out? Oh, because the right's part of the same uniparty. That's why. The right's in on it. Until I hear right-wing people start saying we're going to go after the endowments, I, I get nothing from them. All right, we'll see you.